Welcome again to my weekly podcast. This is Pastor Richard Seafried, and I'm coming to you here from our home in Harrisonburg, Virginia. My goal in this Bible study is to share relevant things from the news that have to do with Bible prophecy and, and applications as far as what the Word of God has to say. I hope you've been enjoying these. This is number six in the series of these. And so if you've missed any of the preceding ones, they are on YouTube and you can look at all of them. I want to begin by reading a passage in the book of 2 Timothy where the Apostle Paul is writing to a young pastor named Timothy and he says this, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Well, I want to talk to you today about the qualities and the traits of a good soldier. The big news this week, of course, is that 13 brave and selfless United States Marines were killed in Kabul as part of our effort to get out Americans and friendly Afghans who were friendly to our cause and they paid the ultimate sacrifice. They gave their lives as a suicide bomber um, uh, took their lives. Our hearts are saddened today. Uh, The news stories have just been heart-wrenching, haven't they? Anybody that has a heart for what it must be like to have a child killed, um, life taken out. I mean, all of these 13 were between the ages of 20 and 30. Can you imagine that? So our hearts and prayers go out to their families. Can you imagine for just a moment what it must be like to have officials with the military show up at your door and knock on your door with the news that your son or your daughter has been uh, killed in battle. I mean, I just can't fathom what it would be like as a parent, knowing what's just naturally in a parent's heart, what that feeling in that moment must be like. The Bible has some things to say about the traits of a good soldier. Number one, and I encourage you to write these down right there in the margin of 2 Timothy chapter 2. I encourage you to write these things down. Number one, a good soldier endures hardness. I'm thinking about what it takes to be a soldier in the United States military today. You have to go through basic training, at least six weeks of intense physical training. Um, often called or referred to colloquially as as, um, boot camp. We have, Nancy and I have two grandsons that are now in the military. Elisha is in the Air Force, and he's been through his basic training there in Texas. And then our son Ethan, Jeff and Carrie's boy, has just finished his basic training there in uh, North Carolina. And um, he is with the United States Army National Guard. It is, it is really a source of pride to have our grandsons in military service. And believe me, if they were here, Elisha and Ethan, they could really testify as to what it means to endure hardness. Basic training is not a picnic. It is really tough. But the purpose of basic training is to help these soldiers and uh, Air Force personnel and Navy personnel to help them to be able to develop strong character. And uh, no wonder Paul begins by saying to Timothy, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. Being in military service is not for weaklings. Let me just say that. Secondly, a good soldier has to sacrifice his or her personal pleasures and the comforts of home to fight a war in a distant land. 
Often they're thousands of miles away from their home. Yet they have voluntarily given up the comforts of home, the pleasures of normal life, just the routines that we all enjoy here in America. They have given that up and sacrificed that in order to serve their country. Jesus, of course, is the perfect example of what that must be have been. The Bible says in Philippians 2 that let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not something to grab onto to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a man and was made in the likeness of a servant. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You see, dear friends, Jesus knows what it means to leave his home in heaven. The blessings and comforts, the fellowship of his own heavenly Father, come down to this earth where he was despised and rejected and, yes, hated as so often our military people are in these distant lands. And he paid the ultimate sacrifice. He gave his life. He shed his blood there on the cross of Calvary for your sins and for mine. So Jesus himself really exemplifies the traits of an obedient, good soldier. The third thing that is a trait of a good soldier is that he or she obeys orders. They are taught in boot camp to say, yes, sir. They are taught to obey chain of command, to not resist the orders that are given to them. Now, the sad thing about these recent 13 Marines that were killed is we all are questioning whether the commands that came from their higher-ups in the Defense Department were really good and worthwhile. Was enough planning put into it? Was it really thought through? And while we may debate whether their assignment was a smart one or not, we have to admit this. They were obedient. They did what they were told to do. And that, dear friends, really is commendable, really commendable. Well, fourth and finally, a good soldier has to be willing to die to set others free. The purpose of serving our country is to be able to protect our freedoms. Jesus embarked on a rescue mission to save lost sinners. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth, listen to this, shall set you free. John 8, 32. Verse 36 of John 8 says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Paul said in Galatians 5, 1, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ, listen, Christ has made us free. But you know, dear friends, freedom does not come without the sacrifice and the shedding of blood. You cannot have freedom from sin, from the tyranny, from the oppression, from the bondage of sin. You cannot experience true freedom apart from Jesus Christ. I hope you've accepted him as your Savior. Today, would you remember to pray for those 13 families those dear families that have been so impacted by the sacrifice their sons and daughters have made. God bless you. I'll see you again next week.